I'm trying to like acquire the facial expression that captures this story. And the Otani story? It, yeah, just all of it. And I don't I, I don't okay. I don't just mean today. I mean the fact that he went to the Dodgers. Seventy million a year is the number. Kinda. Dot 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 kinda. It's actually two. If you're just joining us, details of the Otani contract have been made public. And sixty-eight of the seventy million on an annual basis will be deferred. Shohei will start making that money as soon as the contract ends in ten years. Forty-six of it cannot be deferred in terms of the competitive balance tax. So, in other words, sort of like flash it to the uh, the NFL. The cap hit. The cap hit is forty-six. The cash out is two. And then the overall number is 70. The with guarantees. The, yeah, with 68 being paid later, and Shohei will be taxed on that when he makes it. So This is a Parag special is what this is, because this is what Parag Marate and the Niners does oh so well. That's a great point. He signs you, and you get your guaranteed number, and then a couple <laughs> years down the road, he knocks on your door and says, we're going to need to uh, do a little reconfiguration sensation here. Cha-ching. And uh, kick your money, get some non-voidable years or some voidable years rather down the road and spread your money out a little bit if you wouldn't mind so we can sign A, B, and C as well. And we don't often see this in baseball and especially at this level. Well, but you can't, You can, like it's all guaranteed in baseball as you know. Right. So this guy basically just signed, um, yeah, he signed a 20-year Seven hundred million dollar contract. During ten of those years, he's got to play baseball. Right. The other ten, he can just sit on his butt. He basically said to Bobby Bonilla, "Hold my beer," because oh Bobby Bonilla right? still gets I one know. point whatever, one point oh four million, and or, people still party. I think it's like July first. Right. Like it's Bonilla Day. Exactly. Oh, there's no more Bonilla days. No. Now it's going to be Otani Day, and it's sixty eight times bigger. In twenty thirty three, Shohei Otani is going to be forty. He might still be playing, but let's just pretend he's not playing anymore. And we're at whatever tax-free municipality he decides to call home, can you imagine that direct deposit? Mm. He gets that lump sum. You basically win the lottery every year for uh, for ten straight years. You do, you do. Um, and the Dodgers probably won the lottery as well. I think from a financial standpoint, it's a low risk, no risk, um, but. On the other side of it, when you throw numbers around like that, the risk is almost more emotional than it is financial. I mean, this is somebody who has had two Tommy John surgeries. This is somebody who may only pitch at a high level for two, three, four more years, and this year won't be one of them. Uh, other injuries could certainly come up. Like, again, this is signing someone for his 30s, I'm not trying to say that I wouldn't do it if I were the Giants. I'd do it if I were any of the teams. I would do it every single time. But you are opening yourself up to the fan experience being, um, shall we say, something that's going to be hard to meet. The expectation and the feel right now of what this is going to look like for the next 10 years and that number that's in everybody's brain, $700 million, like – if his best production is already behind him with the Angels, that'll be interesting to hear how that sounds. You know, even in six years, seven years, 37 years old with four more years on the deal, it'll be interesting to see the way the fans are reacting to that if you're looking at a broken down DH who doesn't pitch and hits 24 homers a year. Right. I think it depends on what the first six years look totally. like. If you've got multiple World Four Series, rings. well, even if you've got, I mean, <laughs> yeah. shoot, you got to put the uh, bar a little bit lower for the Dodgers because the Dodgers have kind of won since '88. Not really. Well, I mean, not really. I mean, it, you gotta, they, man, 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 you gotta, man, should have given him a bracelet. Well, I mean, it's they, not a ring. Yeah, it's a bracelet. It's like a one of those toe rings yeah. you'll ever see. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Oh, a I mean, charm they, bracelet. They have whatever they have. That's all they've got. 
They shot their shot, and that's all they've got <laughs> since 88. Yeah. So even if they get one, a one real one with Otani, that would be better than what they have right now. No doubt. No doubt. All which, right. Which I definitely think will make, however it ends, because it's not going to end well. Unless this guy turns out to be LeBron. You made the LeBron comp before. And just 30 well, seconds on LeBron and the IST, the in-season tournament, which everybody is just crushing over the weekend as a sham and a farce and all the rest of it. We're going to put that aside for the sake of this statement. LeBron James. I mean, he can still play. is he playing the best basketball of his career? He can still play. Guy's unbelievable. Incredible. Just incredible. Just incredible. I mean, I mean, look, Tom Adam, Brady. I don't want to yes, do. I don't want to over I, forty. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to do this today. But but the whole like the MJ Lebron thing is just romantic. That's what it is. Like if you really want to like forget oh three Pete and then another three Pete and, uh, and and like it's just about rings. That's it. Six, four, no, oh, no. Oh, MJ, like, yeah, MJ's the best because the people who do most of the talking in American sports media, that was our romantic time. That's when we, like, you look back on it and you're like, we were in college and I, were, I yeah. was 29 and that was when it was good. If you listed all the aspects of sport, all of them, not just who do you want with a dagger shot at the end of game five of the NBA finals, if you listed all things having to do with an NBA player, the whole picture, um, what he does for teammates, longevity, dealing with social media. If you put all that on a piece of paper, come on, man. Come on. Come on. Like, it's unbelievable. It's at minimum a really even Steven conversation. I know that that, that fights everybody's romanticism. Oh, he passed once. Okay, great. <laughs> like, come on, man. He's absolutely insane. It's just been an incredible career. Yeah. It's not over. Coming up on 39 here in a couple of weeks yeah. and uh, still playing at the level at which he's playing. And he will be the first ever player to play alongside his son whenever Bronny decides to leave no, USC. We'll see. I, I think that's, I mean, it's, it's definitely well, just going hoping to that Bronny's going to be healthy enough to continue and play. Yeah, basketball. I think Bronny right? we'll played see. this weekend. He did, did he not? scored yeah. his first bucket. Okay, so yeah. there you go. And, you know, whether or not he's good enough to play in the association, he's going to get a chance to play alongside dad. You mentioned it earlier about if LeBron wants there to be a team in uh, Poughkeepsie, <laughs> and if he wants Poughkeepsie to play alongside of him, or Pajemski. that's going to happen, you know? <laughs> yep. That's true. Yeah. That's true. All right. Um, if you're a Giants fan, how does all of this make you feel? Shohei to the Dodgers, 68 of the 70 million deferred for 10 years. If you're a Giants fan, how does this make you feel? 888-957-9570. And then coming up here in about 20 minutes, we're going to circle back to the best team in the National Football League. That's the 49ers. Scott in Marin. Hey, Scott, you're on with Willard and Dibbs. What's up? Uh, I'm just trying to calculate the savings on the ta California taxes this guy's going to do. It. I mean, it's actually a brilliant move by both. I mean, as much as it sucks to be a Giants fan now, and probably will be for the next 10 years, <laughs> I mean, but, uh, I mean, it, it, made, it actually makes sense financially for both of them because, uh, you know, he's just he's going to go, when he's done playing, he'll be, who knows where he's going to be, like Sid said, some tax-free municipality. So he'll save 13.3% on his tax and not being in California. So, you know, I mean, it's going to make sense as, uh, uh, as far as that goes. But, uh, you know, this is the only way they can do these contracts now. I mean, pretty much everybody's deferring. And, uh, I mean, this is a little ridiculous. Well, but, yeah, uh, like like a bubble's got to uh, – go ahead, Scott. No, I'm just going to say it's just – I mean – this is it is pretty stunning to see him defer this kind of and, and avoid so a heavy tax on the club, and and uh, so now they can go out and fill, go after whoever they want to yep. still. Yep. So you know, I mean, it'd be one thing if they hamstring him, to hamstring the Dodgers, and they can't do much more than him, but that's not the case. So I mean, I, I like you said, the Giants can do the very same thing. The problem is, what are you going to do? I, as far as the, the com competitive baseball, you know what baseball is going to say. Well, check the, what was the payroll of the Arizona Diamondbacks last year. 
it's it's a hard thing to to to, to quantify. You know, to- I mean, totally, maybe totally. Was, I mean, that that lineup is going to be crazy. Oh, that's going to be insane, and Scott. Me- yeah, Th- thank you so much. You you make uh you, you make a lot of good points on this. The answer, by the way, is almost nine million <clears throat> in state tax. A thirteen percent on sixty eight million is eight point eight four million. So he moves out of California, Florida, Texas, whatever. Pick your state, whatever state mm-hmm. is uh you know tax free. You avoid nine million in state taxes. Amazing. Boom. Amazing. You yeah, think, you think you'll be able to afford a house in one of those places? Maybe. All right. Maybe. So, look, this is the question that no player should even have to think about. If I were in his position, I'd do the exact same thing. I'm not sitting here thinking about grander issues of the game, but I do wonder when somebody's going to think about them. Do you know what I mean? And, again, I want to say this very, very clearly. No sour grapes here at all. If I'm the Dodgers, I do this. If I'm Shohei, I do this. And quite frankly, it's not that I don't blame the Giants for not offering the same. They may well have. I don't even think offers. It's likely that offers didn't even go Shohei's way. It's probably the other way around. Right. Like Shohei went to the teams and went so. Because you've heard all those reports. Oh, it was Shohei's idea. Yeah, they probably were like, this is what we're going to do. You in or you out. Because if you're out, we'll go find another team to say yes. You, seven hundred million. We'll defer a bunch so we can still play. You want to do this? Because if not, I'll go be a cub or or, or whatever. Right. Like the, that. That's all going to be on the table. So there's no sour grapes here. But you do have to wonder when the bubble bursts, and when do you get to a point if you're baseball and you start to think about all right. So here come the Dodgers with Shohei and Freeman and Betts and Will Smith. And Max Muncy, okay, that's their lineup. $68 million is being deferred off of one hitter. That's more than the payroll of the team that they're playing on a Tuesday night. And then they're celebrating with champagne like they achieved something. It's like, what the hell did you just achieve? If you're going to build a sport. It's a checkbook championship. Yeah, well, I mean, what it is. it's a hell of a lot more than what the Warriors did. No doubt. You know the Warriors, well, the Warriors at least have a uh, luxury tax that they have to navigate. Baseball well, doesn't really have that. The Warriors and Niners lucked into this by getting players at a high level on an insane discount. The Dodgers aren't discounting anybody. They're they're deferring and they're playing by the rules and they should get a high five for it. But the reason, like I I know no one wants to look at it this way. The this is among to me one of the top three reasons why the NFL is so successful is because Green Bay, Wisconsin, and Jacksonville, Florida can compete with New York, New York, and Los Angeles, California. Like, without even blinking. Nobody even hesitates, right? In fact, Green Bay, Wisconsin visits L.A., and Green Bay fills the building with their fans. You can do that in the NFL. You can't do that in baseball. No. So what is it you're achieving if you just do stuff like this where you're like, We're going to keep pounding until we just financially, star power-wise, overwhelm all of you into submission. Okay, you can do it. I got got no anger for it, but what did you achieve when you beat the Pirates? What did you do? What did you really do? I haven't even heard of any of the Pirates. And, and, And every single player on your team is a Hall of Famer. Yeah, doesn't God. mean that you're necessarily okay. going to win the World Series, though. No, it as doesn't. we saw this year. And, you know, you had San Diego, and you had the Mets, and you had the Yankees, and you had other high-priced teams that were unable to get it done. So it doesn't guarantee you anything. I think it guarantees you more in the NBA than it does in baseball. Agreed. In terms of having the most talented team or the, the highest-paid team, it definitely helps you more in the NBA. Football is such a crapshoot because of injury and also because the nature of the way the talent is spread out through you know, the draft. And ultimately, if you don't have a quarterback, you don't have a chance. You can have, like the Jets are a great example. The Jets have a really, really good team, a really good roster. Yep. And they had a quarterback, but he got hurt, and now they don't have a quarterback, and so they're done. And that's basically the way that goes. If Shohei Otani gets hurt, the Dodgers still have a very good team. Or you know, the Yankees, if they lose Judge or you know, any of these other, quote, super teams. But 
the problem with baseball is that there is no solution because the baseball players union is so strong and they have fought for things like deferred compensation and they will forever rail against any real hard cap, any hard salary cap because they want their players to make the most possible money. So if the players don't care about competitive balance and the owners don't really care about competitive balance, then we're all screwed. Yeah. I mean, I think about a sports fan in Kansas City. You got the face of football shows up every single Sunday. and Crying like a baby yesterday. <laughs> right. But if I was a sports fan in Kansas City, I would move on from baseball. I'd be like, what are, what, what are we doing here? What are, what's here for us? It's kind of why I didn't like the in-season tournament. And that's what I'm getting at. Like, if I'm if I'm a sports fan in Kansas City, I'm looking at this whole f- framework and I'm going, I get that this is really fun for the sports fans in California, but why do, they, why, why do they get everything? Why? Why should they have all of the players? Why should they have all of the money and get to do this so that they get to go get the next star too? At a certain point, people are going to raise their hands and go, I'm sorry, is it my turn? Ever? Do I get a turn or do I just have to sit here? Like, we're turning half of baseball into the Washington Generals. You're just here on the road for our entertainment. That's it. We're here to use you as placeholders for our achievement. And that's the Globetrotters, and that's okay because you buy a ticket to see tricks. But that's not what this is supposed to be. And it feels like we're heading there. If we're not already, there. well, we've been there for a long time. Yeah, maybe. In terms of, this feels like a bigger version of it. This is a, a bigger version because of the way that this all went down with the way that the contract is, and the Dodgers aren't done. That's what makes this feel like <laughs> it's a it's a bigger version of it because Shohei Otani is making two million dollars a year this season, and I know that the cap hit, quote unquote, is forty six million, but that's not such a big number that it's going to prevent them from going out and getting Yamamoto or getting. Hater or getting anybody else that they want to get, they can still spend and they can still, you know, stack their roster to where they need to stack it. And that's the biggest issue, I think, in terms of this feeling different from other big deals. Uh, let's go to RJ in Napa. Hey, RJ, you're all Willard and Dibs. What's up? Hey, guys. I just, uh, I know you had wanted to hear from Giants fans, but I thought I would bring a perspective. Uh, I'm a Tigers fan by birthright, and I'm an A's fan by proximity. Grew okay. up as an A's fan as a kid. And uh, I got to tell you, baseball has been the absolute S's for me the last, I don't know, 5, 10, 15 years, whatever it's been. Um, and this, this Otani thing, I got to say, is pretty much the final nail for me. I, I Just knowing that my teams, well, one is moving to Las Vegas, and the other one has no chance whatsoever. I mean, I know, you know, big baseball doesn't care about me, the little fan, but um, I would assume that if they lost that many more fans, they would start to pay attention. I'm just uh, pretty discouraged by the whole thing. So thanks for taking my call, gentlemen. Yeah, RJ, thanks. You know what's interesting there? Uh, there's also There are also teams out there in baseball that get labeled small market and they're not. Even the, even the image that goes through your head when RJ's like, so I grew up as a Tigers fan. And you immediately go, oh, yeah, the, the Tigers. Yeah. Uh, that's a top five market. That's Detroit. Yeah. <laughs> that's Detroit, Not Michigan. quite top five, but it's, it's Top big. seven. It's, 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 I'll look it up. It's, it, it's definitely top ten. I think it's like six, four, five, or six. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Point is, that's Detroit freaking Michigan. But, the, but that's the I other. I got it at 14, but go ahead. 14? You got New York, L.A., Chicago, and Philly. Yeah. You got Dallas, Houston, Atlanta. This Houston Bay Area. and Atlanta are bigger than Detroit, Michigan. Oh, Houston's as as, huge as a media market. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking, not talking about the size of the city. I'm talking about as a media market. I'm looking at the Nielsen rankings, the designated right. market areas. And then I, if that's the case, then I stand corrected. But either way, it's still big enough. Detroit, Michigan is not a small town, <laughs> right? Right. So the point being is, we end up doing that with some of these markets. I mean, it sort of happened to Oakland. They go oh, Oakland, yeah, Oakland, the, the Bay Area, <laughs> the Bay Area, California. What are you doing? This no, this is there's nothing small about this. You know what I mean? Santa Clara is bigger than some of the markets that have baseball teams. So 
I like we end up doing that with some of these teams where the owners cry poor and should not be allowed to. But when we get to this point, you start to understand a little bit about the things that happen in the NBA. You know, this happens in the NBA all the time. There's not a lot you can do about it. The Sacramento Kings are never going to sign the marquee free agent. It's totally impossible. Yeah. There are ways around it, but when you start seeing stuff like this in baseball, you it's it's almost like all those owners that we've gotten mad at through the years for not keeping up, you're like, okay, like I get why you can't do that. I get yeah, why to an extent I get certainly. why Tampa can't do this. Right. And so you have to go about it in a different way. Totally. And Tampa's been great at doing that very thing in terms of you know, drafting guys and making the most of them while you can and then trading for guys and hoping you can keep them at least for the short term and, you know, doing all you can. And that's why I look at the Giants and maybe it's because of the ballpark. Maybe it's because your team is not that good or that competitive relative to these other places. You got to find different ways to bring in talent because you can't just sit back and try to unload big money offers, especially for hitters, because it's not working. These hitters aren't coming here. So now you need to pivot into a new strategy and either trade for these guys yep. or go all in on pitching and defense and just completely stay away from these sluggers. Well, I think it's both. And it does set up. It set up. Remember the feeling when the Giants won 107 games and beat the Dodgers by one game. And the feeling was, it's like, oh, Man, they you know, not that the Giants are small market or even at a small payroll is smaller than I'd like it to be, but they were top 15, top half of the league, but you looked at it and went like it, it became an easy group to root for because they feel they feel like David against Goliath. Well, that's going to be the case now even more so with everybody against the Dodgers, the whole league. And you look at the standings from last year, and I know where it ended up, and I know who won the World Series. And, and all of that. But look at at last year. Uh, the Baltimore Orioles had the best record in uh, in the American League. The Baltimore Orioles. And most of us could barely name a player on the yeah. team. Um, not that they're a small city either, but you get what I'm saying. Like, there's other ways uh, to do this. Minnesota won a division. Milwaukee won a division. Uh, the Arizona Diamondbacks made it all the way to the end. So that's the other thing that I do think could end up being a positive, not just for the Giants, but for everybody not named the Dodgers. There is now a big mark on the Dodgers, which is you have to win the World Series or it's almost laughable. It's almost laughable. And you know it's not that easy. Like, if you offered me right now Dodgers versus the field, I'd totally take the field. Totally. In baseball, every time. Right. Right. In baseball, certainly. Yeah. And I wonder if the the new World Series odds – uh have reflected the Shohei Otani signing yet. I'll see if I can get those for the other side, but the Dodgers are going to have to be the prohibitive favorites Oh, no now. question.